All right, so today we're going to uh, continue molar conversions, but we'll start doing two-step problems uh, instead of the one step that you've been doing before. So uh, the first one is how would, uh, let's just take a simple example to uh, determine the number of days in 3,453 minutes. Well, if we kind of map this out, we want to go from minutes and we want to get to days. However, um, there's no conversion factor. Uh, there is, but most people don't know it off the top of their head, right, from, from minutes to days. If I said, hey, in one day, how many minutes are there? It might be kind of difficult to figure out. <clears throat> but we do know, very simply, that it, it's, there's 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day, right? And so we can break this down into two steps. <coughs> in our first step, we can convert this many minutes to hours. So when our conversion factor would be 60 minutes in one hour. We can put 60 minutes on the bottom and one hour on the top. And so you get 3, 4, 5, 3 over 60, which will equal. Now, this is not going to be my final answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually keep an extra significant figure. So normally I should have uh, four six figs, I'll have five. In this case, it actually just comes out to four six figs, so I'm okay there. Um, all right, now that I know that 3,453 minutes equals 57.55 hours, I'm not gonna convert that to days, I'm gonna complete my second step. So 57.55 hours, we know that there are 24 hours in one day, right? And so we're going to put 24 hours on the bottom, one day on the top. Let's divide the two. Right. And then I need one, two, three, four, five, six figs, so 2.398 <coughs> um, days. All right. This is fine, breaking it down into two steps. I just want to show you how you can use dimensional analysis and you can complete this in one step. Start out with three, four, five, three minutes. We first want to convert to hours. So, but at this point, we haven't got to where we wanted to. We want to get to days, right? And so if we cross count our unit, right now we have only hours. So I know I have to do one more step. So instead of solving it mathematically, I'm just going to add my next step, which is my second conversion, right? 24 hours is in one day. Well, where would I put 24 hours? Here, right? Because it can cross cancel, and I'll put one day on top. Now if I look at my unit... Have, have I ended up where I wanted to go? Yes. I wanted to end up at days. I'm at days. Now I, I can stop and I can do my math. So in this case, it would be 3, 4, 5, 3 divided by 60 times 24. <clears throat> so 3, 4, 5, 3 divided by 60 and then divide by another 24 will get you the same answer. 2.398 days. In my mind, I would actually prefer you to start combining things. Um, so this is my preferred method <coughs> because you'll encounter four or five step problems, and then so it will be it would be more efficient for you to do it this way. However, there's nothing wrong with taking things step by step. If that's what makes more sense to you, by all means, you can always take it step by steps, and, and there's no problem in doing that. Um, just know that when I when you look at my keys and that kind of stuff I use I'll I'll show you the whole the whole problem like I did. Alright. Before we start the two step problems, I kinda wanna maybe give you something visually that might help you. <coughs> I'll call this kind of a roadmap. And it, I always see students write this on tests or before homework, it's kind of something that would be helpful. So here, if you can imagine, we have different destinations, like a roadmap, right? So 
moles is in the middle. So if I want to go between moles and particles, what would I use? Well, in this case, wouldn't you use Avogadro's number? Right? Particles equals one mole. So you'd use that. If I wanted to convert between grams or mass and moles, I would use the molar mass. One mole equals the molar mass, which is going to be in grams. <clears throat> so hopefully it's helpful because if you can determine within the problem where you, where you start from and where you want to go from, um, this roadmap tells you what you need between destinations. So for example, if it asks me, what is the mass of this many moles? Well, I'm starting with moles, and I want to go to mass. And so therefore, I need to use this conversion unit. <coughs> so for those who are more visual, it kind of helps um, to see. And this will be helpful also um, during um, these two set problems. Okay. All right, so the first one says to determine the number of mo molecules of H2O uh, in 12.2 grams of H2O. So before we start, let's just kind of figure out where we are on the roadmap. So remember we have, uh, let me write here. Okay. So we have moles, we have particles over here, and then you have uh, mass over here, right? All right, so here we use, I'm going to use MM, and then I'm going to use Avogadro's number, AV, over here, okay? <clears throat> Just a shorthand. All right, so determine the number of molecules of H2O in 12.2 grams. So let's determine where we're starting. So where are we starting? We're starting from, or what's given to us is 12.2 grams, right? So that's what's given. Grams is mass, so I'm starting here. And I want to go to the number of molecules. Well, num where's number of molecules? Well, molecule is an example of a particle, right? So I'm going to go all the way here. But notice, I can't go all the way there. I actually need to take a stop here and then go to here, right? So it's going to be a two-step problem. All right, so I'm going to start with 12.2 grams of H2O. <clears throat> now, I have to determine my first conversion factor, right? My first conversion factor will be my molar mass. The molar mass of H2O is 18.02 grams. Okay, so I'm going to put 18.02 grams of H2O is equal to one mole of H2O. All right, so at this point I could cross cancel. What are my units right now? My units right now are moles of H2O, right? Is that where I want to be? Nope, I'm right here, aren't I? So I need to take my next step, which is to get me to particles. I'm not going to solve right now. I can just continue on. <clears throat> What's my next conversion factor? Well, to get from moles to particles, <clears throat> I need to use Avogadro's number. We know one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of H2O. Okay? So let me put one mole here of H2O and 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of H2O. And so that will equal, sorry, I'm running out of space. So now I'm going to multiply everything on the top. So it'll be 12.2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Divide that by what's on the bottom. <clears throat> So my answer is 4.08, and I need three sig figs, um, and a mo this will be molecules of H2O. <coughs> All right, why don't you try the next one on your own? Uh, you can pause the example, and then we can go from there. <coughs> so, 
Um, oh, I'm going to start. I'm going to rewrite my um, roadmap here. So in this case, I'm starting with formula units, right? And I want to get to the mass. So I'm starting here and I want to go here, right? But remember, I got to take my steps. So it's kind of like backwards what we just did. So a uh, formula units of NaCl. We know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of NaCl for every one mole of NaCl. So now I'm at this part, right? I can cross cancel. But I want to get to here. So now I can take my next step. Uh, one mole of NaCl is 58.44 grams of NaCl. All right, now one of my units, grams. Is that what I wanted? I wanted mass? Good. So 8.02 times 10 to the 26 times 58.44 all over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Type that in. <clears throat> so I get to three sig figs, 77. 0.9 grams of NaCl. Okay, so I have more practice now. The what I would say in the practice is, if you look at it, there are some problems that require only one step, and then some problems that require two steps. So you kind of have to be careful. Okay. <clears throat>